we need to just examine that a bit more and not tie our sense of our perception of ourself and our self-worth to other people. It's actually more about doing the job of, am I okay with myself? Cassie Cameron, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Great to be here. So thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah, no, you're more than welcome. Um, it's been a while organizing uh, this conversation. I'm super excited to, to finally have you on. Um, over the last year or so, no one's been traveling, uh, unfortunately. However, I know that you've traveled a lot prior to that. And I'm always really curious when people travel a lot, but also have a really high priority on their health like yourself, because traveling can be hard sometimes to prioritize your health, right? <laughs> um, and so I'm really curious uh, first of all, tell me a bit about some of the places you traveled and, and then how you kind of look after yourself when you are traveling a lot. Yeah, awesome. Um, as you said, you know, I'm missing travel a little bit at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I have spent, I guess, the past 10 years traveling quite a lot. And so I've traveled, this mainly work took me overseas for long periods of time. So I lived a bit in LA and New York and London and Germany and went on some trips all around the world, basically on holidays as well, and got to shoot in some really stunning locations um, for work. When I've been working as a model, that's one of the perks of the job. So. <laughs> and with that, of course, as you said, prioritizing well-being was really, I mean, I've always loved doing that, but actually it was pretty essential because Sometimes I would be getting off a plane. This is probably one of the craziest trips I had. It was flight um, to the US, like one city, then overnight flight to another city for another shoot, get straight off the plane on the red eye, then another city the next wow. day, and then turn, turn around and fly all the way back to Australia. Um, that was probably the most extreme case with two back-to-back -back international long hauls and three different states in three days for two, three different shoots. Very, um, very stressful and taxing on the nervous system. So for me, I mean, that was one of the segues into really taking health seriously and prioritizing it because you just have to. Otherwise that shows on your skin and the way that you show up with other people, the way that you work, your, the level you're operating at is impacted if you're not really, really going above and beyond to take care of yourself. And particularly while traveling, we've got the air conditioning on the plane. We're in a confined space. It's very unnatural. Um, we didn't come to this earth with aeroplanes. <laughs> it's something that our, our system maybe weren't pre prepared for. So some of the simple things that I did, well, let's first of all start with the actual flight itself. Um, so leading up to the flight, I would just make sure that I took it easy the week before, especially if you have a big trip coming up, even if it's a holiday, you know, you still want to just get into that state of relaxation to start with. So eating a bit cleaner in, in the lead up to that. Um, on the plane, some essentials um, definitely water and good quality water. So um, you probably know all about this, Alex, but I'm not talking tap water. I'm not talking the water that they necessarily give you on the plane, just making sure you have high quality spring water, because that way you're going to get the essential hydration, the electrolyte, which is so, so important. Um, coconut water was also something that I really like to take. Of course, good quality coconut water because of those electrolytes. Um, and I'm sure you know all about that from hydrating with the sauna. Right. And so that's really, really important. Um, also some, you know, natural herbs to assist with sleep. Sleep being an absolute pillar of health especially according to Ayurveda or any, any health um, system, really sleep, absolutely essential. And it also a very big challenge, especially of course, as we know, jet lag from traveling between time zones. And I would do the flight from Sydney to LAX very, very frequently. And so my trick, and everyone used to ask me, how are you so fresh the next day? I don't understand this is 
trying to get sleep. It's I'm not one of those people that can sleep sitting up. So I would always, you know, find a way as much as you can recline as possible, the better. Um, but also taking some natural herbs. So valerian root is really good for sleep. Any um, adaptogenic herbs, um, you know, that really pacify the nervous system, prepare you for sleep are really good. Um, anything like that I found really helpful. And then also timing your circadian rhythm or, or kind of getting in line with the time zone of the place you're visiting. So you're about to land in. So by the time that you've put your feet on the ground, you're already feeling somewhat and more of a rhythm. So what I used to do was, okay, so right. Um, if I was to go to sleep at this time, then when I land in LA, it'll be say 5 a.m. and I would have slept. And then I'm kind of in the rhythm because the worst is when you don't sleep and then you end up getting off the plane and then you have to sleep and then you just, it's over. It's all over. <laughs> the whole day. Um, so that's what I used to do. I would do anything to just try and knock myself out and get a great sleep. Um, that was by far the most important thing for traveling water, the hydration aspect, um, trying my best to have some healthy options while traveling, whether I need to pack something or whether I need to just um, choose a, a more healthy option on the menu, for example, um, and then just hydrating um, creams for my hands and, and skin so that, um, yeah, it's just really dehydrating on the plane. Um, and so now I've come to learn more about the principles of Ayurveda, which is an ancient system of, of healing and general health um, translated as the science of life. Now I'm understanding there are, a, according to Ayurveda, three primary, uh, I guess, humors or biological makeups called doshas. And there's pitta, kapha, and vata. And vata is, is a, a type of... Um, I guess, disposition that gets out of balance through things like flying. So just making sure when I've landed, I'm doing things to ground myself and pacify Vata. So that means anything that's grounding and soothing, getting my feet on the earth, getting in some salt water um, in the ocean and um, actually just nourishing my skin. So self-massage or getting a massage. Um, if we have the luxury to do so when we land, depending on what we're doing, I found was incredibly helpful. And you know what? I love going to day spas. I, lo I love all of that. So what I used to do is also my secret hack. Um, I would land in LA and then just book out five hours at my favorite Mm -hmm. Korean bathhouse mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I would go there and I would just luxuriate in all of the beautiful things. It wasn't an expensive place. It wasn't exactly luxurious. It was extremely high value and go in there and they had um, the saunas, they had the, the hot mugwort's tea baths, they had spa, they had a Himalayan salt room, um, and then they had some really nourishing, healthy Korean food, um, vegetarian-based. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of things I did, particularly traveling to LA, that I got in this rhythm and was really comfortable. But, you know, when we can't do all of that, and, and sometimes there are some really gnarly um, flights or yeah. situations, it's just my... I mean, I should have really led with this, but my number one thing of um, and, and key tool for life and for travel is meditation because um, the type of meditation practice um, I do every day, twice a day, is one that is a profound detoxification of stress and profoundly restful. So really, really supportive of the nervous system and energy levels, um, especially when we're not getting enough sleep or enough quality sleep. And I found that that is the thing that really carried me through. So if I was not going to sleep on that plane, um, especially going domestic flights in America, I mean, forget it. Um, then I would just be deep in meditation, sometimes sitting there for a really long period of time meditating and everyone thinks you're sleeping. You're like, no, oh, I'm actually just on another planet here. So yeah, that was my um, number, number, number one. I mean, in life and um, for travel and I've been talking for a really long time about this. <laughs> so maybe you want to ask another question. No, just, no that's totally awesome. What kind of, um, what 
kind of meditation do you do when you're on the planes or each day? So the there are so many different types of wonderful meditation, but the practice that I personally resonate with a lot is called Vedic meditation, um, otherwise known as transcendental meditation. And the reason that I love this is because it basically throws all of those old myths about meditation out the window. It's extremely effortless. It's easy, profoundly restful, um, profound impact on your life. And you just sort of rest into your, your given a mantra, which is a sound that when it's repeated effortlessly in the mind acts like a vehicle and takes you into a very deep restful state. And there's been so many studies done on this about how, um, how good it is just for your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's something I absolutely swear by. I mean, I joke about this, but I'm like, you know, I'd rather meditate and brush my teeth you know it's like, <laughs> you've got to do it I mean gross you may think I'm gross listening to this but really it's it's true because um once you sort of stick to it and and make it a consistent habit you can really um see the profound benefits mentally physically emotionally spiritually even with um your capacity to deal with challenges and um, in life and in business even. So yeah, that one, I've become a big advocate for that and um, have met so many incredible teachers and I haven't really met anyone that has practiced it consistently that hasn't reported the same kind of story. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I totally resonate with that. It's just that time each day to just, I don't know how really to best explain it, but you just, it gives you like a, a base kind of consciousness to then experience the world. And you therefore don't attach yourself to the things that may stress you out, or you may, you know, in the past have thought were bad things that were happening to you. You can just witness those things and come from this place of almost like more connected to source, more connect, connected to spirit and just witness the world. And it does have a profound impact in all those areas of our health because of that. Like, it's just, it's witnessing and and I think you start to tap into more of like everything that happens is beautiful and you're, you're more tapped into that unconditional love that sits inside all of us and you just, I don't know, tend to go about life in a, in a different, more calm, less stressed way and it's why it's such an important kind of fundamental to be able to have that practice, you know. Mm, beautiful. I love how you described that. You're very spiritual. <laughs> 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 Thanks. I think... Yeah, you know, I um, I talk a lot about fasting and people who listen regularly know that I talk a lot about fasting. One of the reasons I love that is because when you fast, you like you just do a lot less, right? And therefore, you, you kind of have to sit with yourself and you realize that the mind goes crazy and you tell yourself mm-hmm. all these stories and all this nonsense and and through fasting, you, you you cleanse a lot physically, but also emotionally, and you can get to that space that does sit with inside all of us, where it is more calm. You know, um, my current yoga teacher says, like, the lake of the mind, like, <laughs> keep the lake of the mind still. You know, and it's easier to do that when you do meditate a little bit more, and you're just kind of more aware about what's going on. So um, that's really cool. Yeah, and and also sometimes bring it back to the planes. I think sometimes like you said those plane rides are just so you just sometimes you just get on a plane and it's just like really challenging it's like a 40 minute flight and it's like oh this is gone forever but you just <laughs> meditate <laughs> you can just like take a breath it's it's not so bad 100 percent. oh my gosh and yeah for those that are also nervous of flying because i know there's a there's mm. a lot of that in fact my cousin gets you know she's hates flying I think the meditation helps with that as well. So um, doing that and just grounding the self, um, even just kind of, even though your feet aren't actually on the earth, mm-hmm. just kind of feeling your feet mm-hmm. on the bottom of the plane, I also feel helps. Yeah, absolutely. And let's touch on that for a second because I think that's really important in terms of traveling in general. Um, but also in terms of I work from home a lot and I'm on Zoom a lot and it's quite ungrounding being in front of a computer a lot is ungrounding being in planes and traveling can be ungrounding. So I really liked what you're saying about like trying to get your feet in the earth and 
even massage, like being like having that physical touch can bring you back into your body. Um, mm. So it sounds like that was something that you kind of employed when you traveled a lot as well to make sure you were grounding um, back in with earth and mother nature. A hundred percent. Definitely where I'm working at the moment, um, running 111 is what's from my home office. And so we're really lucky here. We've got surrounded by nature so I can take breaks and go and put my feet on, on the grass and feel the wind in the trees and, and have all of that, which is so, so beautiful. But I know before this, I was really um, well, living in the city and, you know, I used to maybe listen to people on podcasts say, oh, you know, just go be in nature, put your feet on the ground. <laughs> well, what if we can't? So right. exactly. There are other things we can do to stay grounded. Um, Abhyanga massage, um, which is just basically an Ayurvedic tool, a, a staple really Mm. and ayurveda a daily ritual it's really simple you're just using a high quality oil on your body and massaging in a specific way and that's really grounding and pacifying for the nervous system you kind of feel like you're walking around with a bit of a shield on for the rest Mm. of the day um and you're absolutely right in saying that all of this artificial light and these screens and um being disconnected from nature is very stressful maybe on a level we can't feel um and i even noticed with spending a lot of time on screens if you're running a business uh remotely and i noticed my eyesight started to kind of get impacted so um i invested in some blue light glasses which um i felt was really good for too much screen time and you've got some awesome um and then at night um dylan who's my business partner he's an ayurvedic practitioner and he's got me onto all of these things and it's been incredible um especially at night with um getting like a a red lens uh blue light glasses at night so that you can kind of start to align your hormones with your sleep cycle so been doing that and yeah definitely getting out as much as i can probably still should take more breaks i mean sometimes my husband comes in and goes are we taking a break (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so workaholic over here but i i what we did was we set up some hammocks in the garden so i could um go and kick back and lie in them and if i was really just over being in the office take some calls um or zooms from my hammock you know If you can, great. (laughs) Um, So that's it, just small things. And then, um, yeah, just making sure we're drinking water because I'm I'm learning a a lot. I'm always researching things to do with health, of course. And, you know, we now know that um, actually this exposure to a lot of the EMFs and and so on can be very dehydrating. So then again, going back to, well, how can we rehydrate the system as much as we can? So I think those things to stay, help you to stay grounded and not all up in, in your head a lot, you know, back into the body. Love what you said. Always about coming back into the body, whether it's a breath work practice, whether it's movement, yoga, massage, all of these beautiful holistic practices we now get to access. It's a, it's a game changer because then, as you said, we're not spending all this time ruminating in our head and thinking about a to-do list because that's not living. Yeah. <laughs> that's not where life happens. Maybe I used to think that before I became a meditator and then I realized how much time I'd been spending in that head. And now, as a, it's, as you said, a different experience because you're tapped into living life from a different space with a different lens where the mind becomes like a a companion or, or someone along for the ride, but it's not directing the ship. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it just becomes, it's something that we can notice just like a physical sensation. Like, Oh, oh my mind's thinking this today. Hmm, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> but we don't have to identify with every single thought that's in our head. Like it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking that I can notice that. But for so much of my life and perhaps similar with yourself, like, you were just identifying with all your thoughts and wanting to, oh, there's that to-do list. I better do that. I better do this, you know, this thing. Instead of just seeing it for what it is, it's just the mind doing its thing and that's okay. And sometimes it goes crazy and you can just observe that and sometimes it's a bit more calm. Um, Yeah, it's a cool kind of place to be in, to be able to see it like that and not just fully identify with every single thought that we have, you know. Absolutely. I saw something really fascinating um 
there was a video on Instagram the other day and I don't know, maybe you can speak to your experience, but, uh, and I looked it up and there's a lot of psychology studies done on this about how we experience our thoughts. And I'd be curious for those listening to this, what your experience is. It blew my mind to realize that uh, a portion of us um, actually hear a narrator speaking as if it's a voice and another portion of us kind of don't have that or, or the thoughts are somehow there. They're more perceived mm. as, as a phenomenon or, or visually or, or just a felt sense. Um, and I was absolutely, um, you know, just struck to, to think, wow, I, I can't believe the experience of the other. Um, for me, it's my thoughts are just kind of perceived. Um, I don't have, I can't hear a physical voice or I don't have a narrator, but what is your experience? Because I, I'm fascinated asking people this question and whichever side you're on, the one you're on, you cannot believe and can't imagine the experience of the other side. So <laughs> I'd be curious. I'm going to ask you and a two question. What is your experience of that? Yeah, I love that. I, for me, when I have a thought, um, I almost like see, see the words. It, it, it's just kind of like, oh, like that car is that car is black or this thing needs to happen. It's not someone like telling it to me. It's just like the words kind of are there. And um, yeah. So I think that may, is that maybe more perceived than the narrator? Yeah. It's um, there's, I'll see if I can send you the link to the video later, but you go into the comments and it's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's so wild. So a lot of people saying, well, of course, I, I have a narrator narrating my every move. <laughs> They're like, I mean, doesn't everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, the same as you. When I see a car, I just sort of somehow realize that the car's black or I'm thinking about, but there's no there's no words even. Like it's it's hard to explain. And then some people are saying, well, how on earth do you think if there's not a physical voice? So my, my curiosity, and I know we've gone off in tangent, is understanding well, okay, is that just a matter of different perceptions of the same thing because mm-hmm. everything's a perception or is it, yeah, I'm just so curious. I, I would love to hear, you know, anyone listening to this, their comments and feedback because it's just it's such an interesting thing to explore. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> it's almost like when we have that lens, uh, we, we can't see any or understand any other way, you know, and it just goes to show how we all have our own perceptions and lenses on the world, right? And we, it, it's so easy to, to think that everyone sees the world the way that we see it and everyone perceives the way we perceive and everyone understands things the way we do when in, when in truth, no, like no one actually has the exact same lens on life as ourselves, you know? Uh, you see things differently to the way I do. We can relate, but they're not identical, you know? Um, yeah, it's really interesting to think about. I want to um, I want to jump back to uh, when you were traveling around um, modeling, and um, I was really curious. Like, you travel a lot. You, you've got this amazing <laughs> uh, routine to to meet to mean that you're going to rock up and you're going to look as good as you can after being on a plane for twenty or thirty hours. Um, how do you kind of how did you manage your your mental state rocking up on set feeling perhaps at sometimes like maybe you didn't look your best because you've just been on a plane or you've just been traveling or whatever like how did you kind of handle that in that industry because i imagine that would be a big part of that right like i feel like there'd be a lot of pressure in those moments yeah i mean this is a whole this is a whole topic topic for a whole podcast probably <laughs> this um fascinating i did another podcast and um, with a lovely um naturopath and and gut health expert georgie collinson and, and we discussed this topic in a lot of detail um because it's a very interesting thing as you as you just said all of us perceiving life differently um is is fascinating on its own Mm -hmm. then you add another few layers which is our individual perception of our own bodies and what that means then individual perception of what beauty is Mm -hmm. um and then also this extremely strange job um of 
you have to, you're selected for this job because your appearance is a certain way and you have to meet certain um, industry standard requirements to do X, Y, and Z, which has shifted and changed a lot for the better since I've, you know, slowly transitioned out of the industry. Um, So when I first started, like all those years ago, it was very different to what it is now. And this is before Instagram. Mm. This is when you were still walking around with um, cutouts of magazines and printouts and a big book and a card with your face on it to go and meet people. And then maybe if you met the right photographer and traveled to enough countries, you would, you know, rise up the ranks. And then now it's like, get an Instagram account, (laughs) 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 Um, which is awesome. But it's, it's also, we've had, we've come a long way in terms of diversity and body shapes and we've got a long, long way to go. Um, But definitely during my time there, I think I was fortunate enough to, I've always been very um, an independent thinker and quite quirky in that way. Um, and from a young age would always think, what if it was like this? And what if the world was like this? And ask weird questions and um, kind of just did my own thing, really. I, I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> um, and <laughs> so, so similar, Cassie is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I would just kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to um, explore this extremely weird job. And I got into it because I wanted to travel and I liked novelty and variety and um, just saw it as kind of a fun, interesting challenge. And I like to be creative and I love beauty and I love the female form and I love fashion. So I thought, well, let's explore this for a while. I didn't know it ended up becoming like a decade long career and traveling the world, but anyway, um, started out and you know what the thing is, first thing I would say is, I mean, this is particularly from the perspective of anyone who would be getting into this industry or a similar performers industry, I suppose. Um, Just check yourself about why you're doing it. I think the intention about getting into the industry is everything because if you're getting into it with a sense of, well, I'm going to need to do this to establish or prove my sense of self-worth. Well, honey, it's going to have the opposite effect, (laughs) let me tell you. Mm -hmm. But if you go in there with, I'm going to explore and I realize that this is a strange job and it has nothing to do with who I am and my sense of self, well, you're going to enjoy it because it's fun um, as long as you manage yourself in the right way and, and you know, do certain things. And that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's with the perception of, of am I looking my best or, or is my body in shape? Yeah, there are real um, challenges mentally with other people's expectations and perceptions of you. Mm-hmm. And, I had the, the great fortune of having a couple of experiences with, which I think the, the universe just crafted to show me the truth, which was in the same week I was booked on three different shoots for three different types of clients. I had the same appearance, of course, on mm-hmm. all three shoots because it was in the same week. Yeah. One of the clients um, said I was far too skinny and I was looking bony and they sent me home from the shoot. Right. And that was like, wow, when you're sent home, that's, you know, a big right. deal. Yeah. Um, then there, and there was another shoot where they said to me, oh, you know what? It's really, really nice to have a real looking curvy girl <laughs> on the shoot. And, you know, it's great. And how progressive, um, which made me just laugh because yeah. what? Um, and then the same week, the last thing was, oh, you know, you're really, you're really muscly. You know, are you into surfing? It's, um, you kind of look like a bodybuilder. And I think that as crazy as that scenario seems, it really happened. And that's just an illustration of how, just as you said so beautifully, each of us have an individual perception of the world. And that is not limited to our bodies and how we perceive each other's physical appearance. And so because I had the opportunity to have that experience it could have gone either way I could have thought you know what um something's wrong with me and you know I'm imperfect and I need to oh I need to try and be all things to all people no um you know I chose to go the other way which is well how interesting that 
people are looking through this different lens and through if you're a model people are going to tell you you're too short and too tall you're too fat you're too skinny you're too this you're too that how about not listening to any of that and just realizing that that's people's own projections and it has nothing to do with with you and you know what if you feel like shit that day then you feel like shit but just own it just just do your best um know that your physical appearance is not all of you and that likely if, if you're perceiving yourself in a certain negative way there's going to be a ton of people out there thinking the exact opposite um and so we need to just examine that a bit more and not tie our sense of our perception of ourself and our self-worth to other people. It's actually more about doing the job of, am I okay with myself? Mm -hmm. And this is a consistent daily practice. I still do stupid things like this. I still turn around and, you know, I don't know why we do this, but every girl does it. I don't know. But I still say stuff to my husband like, do I have a fat ass? (laughs) 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 He's like, no, to instantly say, no, not at all. It's perfect. Um, And so (laughs) I still do that, but I say that in jest, you know, it's, it's just the older I get, the more that I get comfortable in my own skin, just to not to sound like a cliche, but I think that's a lot to do with my meditation practice. And as you said, not overly identifying with the physical, because that's just one aspect of self. Um, had I, had I gone into that industry not having that alternative perspective in those experiences, um, maybe I would have come back and said, you know, I really struggled. Um, but the reality is, and I, I certainly witnessed that in a, a lot of my friends and, and um, women that I lived with and their own struggles and experiences, um, particularly if you're doing runway, um, that's just a whole nother I don't even know where to start with that. But with me, I was, I was, um, I I had a pretty overall positive experience. And I think, um, I think, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. That's amazing. I think that's really empowering for a lot of women to hear. I mean, there's just that constant thing going on. Uh, Is my ass too big? Am I, am I too skinny? (laughs) Like, and it's, I think it's hard as well, especially with social media, as we all know, like you're just constantly seeing like other people and without even realizing, I think it's easy to start to think, start to compare yourself. Well, I don't look like that. You know, I don't look like that. And it can be a really hard space, you know. Um, I like what you said. It's just like, forget about all that. Take it back to yourself. Like, how do I feel about my body? And sometimes there has to be some brutal honesty there. Like, Actually, no, I need to put some muscle on. (laughs) So then you go and do the work, you know, or actually, no, I'm feeling really good, you know, and, and the mind, you, you would know more about this than me, but the mind plays tricks on us too, because you get used to being a certain way and that becomes the norm. And then you start to see the differences between where you are and, um, and other people. I experienced that firsthand after a 21 day water fast recently, I was down to 47 kilos, right? And, and I actually got used to being at 47, 47 and a half kilos and I kind of got used to it. So then when I put on a few kilos, <laughs> I remember the day I literally, I'd started doing some rock climbing again and I was doing yoga and I was getting a bit stronger and I looked in the mirror and I was like 50 kilos or something. And I thought, Oh yeah. <laughs> like, look at you, mate. Like you're putting on some muscle. Like, and I really, in that moment, I was like, Oh, like look at me, I'm getting strong. And then I saw a photo of me a couple of days later, my partner and I were in Cairns and I saw a photo of me from behind and you could see um, my entire spine sticking out of my back and my shoulders just like sticking out. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm still quite skinny, you know, but the mind gets used to where we're at and it is always playing these funny buggers with us comparing us or, um, thinking you know where where we could be or our ego gets involved and says oh you should be this you should be that and just reminding ourselves like keeping to our own standards and and what we want not listening to others and letting them shape you know our feelings about our body or ourself yeah absolutely Jeez, mate, I'm glad you, glad you were right after that fast. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's it's even just humorous looking at 
how different cultures perceive beauty and whether that's, you know, body weight or, or different things. And you kind of go, well, wow, um, why am I so hung up on a particular maybe aesthetic I can see on Instagram um, when beauty is so transient and trends that we all get attached to come and go? Um, it doesn't make any sense. I think the most beautiful women I've met throughout my career have, have always been the ones that have just embraced their their natural selves i i really am wary of sounding like a cliche i don't want to make you guys cringe oh i know God, you said <laughs> so again. cliche i can't deal but <laughs> it, it really it's true because you kind of look at well who is the most beautiful woman in the room and she's the most confident it's more like on an energetic level it's like a radiance that comes with yeah, I know I'm good. And it doesn't have anything to do with how you look. And I feel qualified to say this because I've met a lot of people um, in my career who would be considered very attractive by, I don't know, modern society standards, but it was always the ones that had that inner radiance um, and beauty that really would kind of knock people over and you, you meet them in real life. And it's like a whole nother level um, and kind of come pops out of the page. And a, a, a famous photographer I know was just, I interviewed him one time about this and he just said, you know, it's just about that, that feeling and that connection with the eyes that jumps out of the page. And then that makes the shot. It's not about how glossy your hair is looking that day um, and how much you can pout um, and then adjust your photo and post it. Like it's nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, yeah, enjoy it. Think about what your your natural features are. And um, according to Ayurveda, there's the prakriti. So it's like your, your natural dis, um, disposition, how your body's meant to be, you know, feeling, is this underweight for me? Is this overweight for me? Where's my natural balance my my point of health maybe it's it's looks more beautiful more radiant for someone to have a bit more weight on them and that's their natural makeup whereas for other people maybe a vata type that would be um them being out of balance so mm. i like what you said about it's, it's actually what's showing on the outside is really just representative of, of what's going on on the inside mm. um and we need to just as a society avoid um these boxes we put each other in and these metrics that mean nothing and this um obsession with trying to um create a perception of beauty because it's unnatural not to appreciate diversity there's so much diversity in nature it's actually essential it's a it's a fundamental principle of the universe diversity so um let's let's all get back to that i think we've got we've come a long way but still got a long way to go Mm, yeah, I love that. I mean, nature is almost a, a chaos, um, you know, compared to the mind wants to put everything in boxes and you go out in nature and it's like, there's no, there's no boxes out there. It's just, it just is. Yeah. yeah. Organized chaos. Yeah, it yeah. works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Ayurvedic principles. Cause I find this, um, I find this really interesting actually, because uh, although there's a lot of things I know about health, I actually know very little about this topic. Um, and so I find it really interesting. So I know that I understand that there's like Vata and um, a couple other categories and that these are associated with some of the elements, right? Like fire and, and earth, I, I think along those lines. Yeah. So yeah. I'd love if you could talk a little bit more about those and maybe how people can sort of learn what they are. Cause it sounds like it gives people a bit more of an understanding of um, things that they can do in their health that are going to help them. Yeah, definitely. So Ayurveda, you know, this is something that I'm earnestly learning and I'm, I'm by no means a practitioner or an expert on, on the topic. I am a humble student of particularly my business partner, Dylan Smith, who's a, he's an educator and he's, um, he's wonderful. He's got a lot of knowledge to share. Um, and I've learned a lot from him and, and yes, there is, there are some fundamental principles of Ayurveda, which is all comes back to simplicity and aligning with nature. A lot of it 
honestly is common sense stuff. Um, I think a lot of us in the West are looking for what's the latest hack, you know, what's the newest thing, you know, where's my magic pill? Um, (laughs) And it doesn't work like that. And so Ayurveda brings us back to, hey, guys, you know this. It's about eating seasonally, eating um, in line with, with nature itself because what's in season is what our body needs at that given time um aligning our lifestyle with the seasons too um this is where the elements and the the elements are sort of um heat and cold and everything come into it it's about if if this is just a really simple example say you're you're a pitter type or or you're it's summer and it's hot um then you're not going to go and eat really hot food um, that's spicy because you're going to increase too much heat in the body. It's one example. It's all about balance. That's a fundamental principle. If something's a certain way, it's out of balance, bring it into balance with this. And we have different tastes that are both heating and cooling. We have all the different elements. Um, another principle of Ayurveda is, well, just it's aligning with cycles. So getting up with the sun, the sun's rising and going to bed, you know, when the sun's down, not too late before 10 p.m. So you want to get up, you know, around sunrise before six, between four and six, maybe depending on, you know, who's discussing this Um, and and getting in sync with that rhythm, rhythm of the seasons, rhythm of your life, you know, what's what's a relevant timing for what. Um, There are different doshas or elements that govern different times of day kind of similar similar to chinese medicine in that way um and there's again we just spoke about the three doshas there's you know we have the five elements water earth air space fire Mm -hmm. um and then the doshas are, are three um i what is uh, Dylan? You know what Dylan is going to explain this a lot better than you guys. Where's Dylan? But, Can we get him on the phone? Dylan, <laughs> um, you should interview him. Um, but yeah, the doshas are. Uh, he warns not to stick too rigidly to the doshas. We all of us have a primary dosha or two doshas that um, are relevant to our elemental makeup but then your dosha can fluctuate and change just like i gave the example of when you're on an airplane you're you're in the air so too much air but is air and space means you up up airy fairy bring back to grounding with literally doing that grounding the earth element um for example say you're in sauna that's a lot of heating heating pitta is made up of fire water so You want to then make sure that you're cooling, especially if you're a pitta type, cooling, especially the head. What I do in the sauna is put like a cold towel on my head. I'm just so I don't overheat because I've got a pitta in my makeup. Um, Those are just some examples, but then there's, so Vata, we spoke about pitta and then kapha is, is that earth element. So earth and water. So You can be a combination of one of these, um, two of these primary. Some people are all three, more tridoshic uh, in a primary sense, but this can also change throughout the day, throughout your life, throughout after major life events. So it's kind of more about not, oh, this is, you know, this is my dosha and I can't veer from that. It's just what am I feeling at any given time Um, and bringing that back into balance. So if I'm feeling a bit airy fairy and earth fairies and i've got a lot of thoughts um then i know that okay well we need to come back to ground now so that's when i walk outside do you know self massage feet on the ground um if i'm feeling a bit hot and fiery the pitta types you know can get very angry or passionate <laughs> or work 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 <laughs> right yeah <laughs> then you know you can say oh pitta is a bit out of balance i need some cooling herbs um in in bliss our flagship product with 111 a lot of those herbs are very cooling so just calming pacifying the nervous system um get get some fresh air some cooling you know um different fruits or or some watermelon or something and yeah or mint tea you know something like that licorice um or say if you're kapha one way 
that can be out of balance is if you're a bit kind of sluggish and you're finding it hard to get going in the morning, you're a bit like, oh, I can't be bothered. Um, I'm not saying this is always the answer, but that can be a, a symptom of, you know, maybe we need to inject some some fire into there and some movement. So get moving, you know, um, add some spice to your diet, literally the spice, the heating, um, sweat, you know, things like that. So it's it's really empowering when you can look at having this framework and actually Dylan has a really great online course, which is a resource all about this. And it's also done so many different masterclass videos on this for 111, but how we can just apply these very, very simple, but fundamental principles of nature. So we don't feel like we're following rules as such, or there's no restriction. It's just, okay, so I'm, I'm feeling a bit like this. What can I do to bring it back into balance? What's relevant? What's seasonal? What's in line with nature rather than, okay, so I'm going to go to a cold country and order in some out of season frozen berries and mm-hmm. put them in my shake. So it's just, when you've put it like that, it's just about making sense. Yeah. What it's about. So when I found Ayurveda, I was like, oh, finally, mm-hmm. um, okay, this feels like it makes sense because from the Vedic perspective, um, life is not at all about pushing and forcing and straining. It's more about a, a relaxing into the alignment and letting it flow. And that fundamental prin- principle of effortlessness and flow, that is is what the meditation is all about, um, Vedic meditation meditation they have all these sister um, practices and, and frameworks that all make sense to that and if you look around it at nature itself in the sense of the trees and and the uh, the animals and the season it just kind of happens like you said so um I always look to if I'm I'm not quite clear or not really understanding where I'm at I just look around and go well, you know, what would the tree do about that? And you you find they've got this ancient wisdom that's been around a lot longer than us, you guys, you know, we forget um, humans are new to this planet. Um, So uh, what's worked for that? Um, Let's adopt some of that. And nature's not... um, Nature's not out there getting angry that something's not getting done. Nature's just sitting back in it and flowing with it. And it all happens. It's all done. All of those mountains, all of those oceans all of these amazing things we see birds of paradise dancing for each other in the forest. I mean, they just know what to do. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but yeah, that that's, I know I'm very much doing it in justice um, to learn more about Ayurveda. Yeah, definitely. I can link you up with some resources, but it's very empowering. Um, begin exploring it and you'll find out for yourself. That was beautiful. <laughs> No, really, that was that was really nice just to tune in and just to listen to that that download. Then um, Ramdas says confusion is saying we don't know when in truth we do know, and when we're quiet, uh, we realize that actually we are in tune, or we can be more in tune with nature and more in tune with ourselves. You know, and I. I just love so much about what you just said because Ayurveda gives us a framework, if you will. So we can think about, I'm feeling a certain way. Maybe I need to balance myself with more of this. I need more grounding. I need more fire, Um, which as a side note, meditation helps us have the awareness of that, right? Mm, Um, Although we have this framework, we still... When we're, when we're still and when we're quiet, we can tune in and we can listen. I say it's like listening to our heart, mm-hmm. listening to our intuition, getting out of up here. And we, we, we do know what we need, you know. And when you really have a deep conversation with people and you create the space, we know, we can tune in. We really know what, what, what is best for us and what's, uh, what feels right and perhaps what we need to balance out more and, framework like you just spoke about then kind of gives us the tools in a way we can tune in we can be quiet i need a bit more of this cool i'll go and do that you know instead of just trying to overthink our way um out of how we're feeling with our health um so yeah that was that was really nice and that's the power of those frameworks is that then we have these tools to use um and if we put ourselves in the right space then we actually can really look after ourselves you know without having to get third and fourth and fifth opinions from 
naturopaths and other people and there's definitely a place for that i'm not saying there isn't Mm, mm. um but yeah i just felt like i really wanted to kind of add that there because i think when we're quiet we we can look after ourselves and um, frameworks like the ayurveda really give us the tools to be able to do that well Mm, yeah i i love it and and thank you for that. And I, I agree. It's like, even if we can't immediately see it or, or we need to get more familiar with or reattune to these things, this is something that, you know, ancestors knew. So really what we're doing with 111 and our mission is aligned with yours. And it's, it's reconnecting people back with what they do already know, even if it doesn't seem like it, even if it's deep down mm-hmm. and it, it's really just making a choice is really aligning with that knowledge and it's not about beating ourselves up and it's it isn't about that if I only just um you know took this magic pill it's not that um and it all does start with education it starts with that awareness and it also starts with a curiosity and willingness to explore because there's a lot to not to know and as you said you can really you can really go in a rabbit hole with this stuff. It's fascinating. Um, but then again, coming back to basics, because um, uh, with previous business I had um, with my husband, we'd have health supplement stores, like retail stores. And, you know, first and foremost, we would we would educate people that walked in about, this is great. We have these wonderful um, remedies and supplements and vitamins, but, you know, if you're not, aligned with you know the right diet if you're not sleeping if you're not um having a more holistic lifestyle guys this is two percent of of the whole thing you know so um so yeah we're definitely aligned with you in that um it's starting off with that willingness and curiosity but then being being willing to make it a lifestyle and and you won't look back yeah i love that there's those fundamentals there which need to be looked after and um it's having that curiosity i actually have curiosity this isn't something i'd kind of plan to talk about but how do you like you have quite successful business in 111 and obviously business ownership has been part of your kind of life um yeah how do you kind of for you does that kind of fulfill that sort of growth element of you spiritually or like where does that sit in terms of your health you know for me growing a business is like that's just part of what I want to do to feel like I'm achieving in life, but also helping others. Is it something similar with yourself? You just kind of feel like you want to give back. I'm just curious about about that. Yes, absolutely. So with 111, it's, I mean, it's been a pleasure and a joy for that exact reason. So myself aligned with everyone else that is a part of it. My partners are doing this in service. It's, not about us. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I love designing the packaging and the brand and and connecting with the team. But uh, like yourself, this is this is all part of it. This is the real sadhana. This is the real, you know, our meditation practice is not confined to the morning and the afternoon. It's it's all about that. So, you know, business. I don't know. I've been through this journey as well. Maybe that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's like business before meditation um, is felt a certain way. And then, and after meditation is a whole nother different thing because it's no longer about, well, how can I live the, I don't know, American Australian dream. <laughs> um, but it's how can I use my unique uh, talents, um, gifts, um, what I feel like is my dharma um, to then fulfill that and give back and without attachment to, oh, it has to um, meet certain metrics or and be in a certain way. Actually, a lot less attachment and a lot more listening and, and attuning. And, you know, without sounding too hippy dippy, it's more just you are the vehicle and this has its own vision and mission and it's going to work out that way. And and you're along for the ride and it's, it's about something much, much bigger than you. And I think in 2021, if you're not, you're not doing a business that is consciously led and is in service and solving a real problem, well, what are you doing? You know, 
just to put it out there. Oh, like- I love that. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what are you doing here? Yeah. I totally resonate with that. Like, as you know, we're, uh, by the time this podcast come out, we either would have just rebranded or are about to rebrand. Um, and one of the reasons we're doing that is to be truly purpose led. You know, what are mm-hmm. we here to do to help create a healthier world? That's huge, right? That's big. And that's what I want it to be because we have this opportunity. Uh, you know, I shared a little bit about my story earlier, but for me, like I had this opportunity with this amazing business to be able to help a lot of people, you know, and even if those people, it's just a 1% shift in their health and their lifestyle. I know the impact that that has over even a year, two years, five years that spreads to their friends, their family, others. And we're having these kind of conversations now, which is even going to influence people. And for me, it's like, like I have goosebumps just saying that right now and hearing what you were saying about what you're doing with the 111. It's just totally, it's just really freaking cool. You know? <laughs> and like you said, if you're, what are you doing in 2021? If that isn't like, if it isn't that purpose led really trying to um, like help people and have that positive impact. Yeah. Amazing. Love it. And, and it's also a joy for us to be a part of, cause you know, you're learning every day and, mm-hmm. and even just sort of, discussing it repeating you know you're like how how much further can i embody this how much more have have i got to learn because being it yourself first is everything and then mm-hmm. like oh wow and sharing that with the world so yeah congrats beautiful yeah oh and, and, and to you too i was smiling earlier when you're talking about like circadian rhythms and sleep and all this stuff i'm like yes this is the conversation like this is the information <laughs> um so i know that you have quite a beautiful home space um you've specifically to the sauna it looks amazing where you've got the sauna and everything but aside from that you're you're creating what to most people would say is an absolute paradise um i would maybe challenge that and say we could all create that if we really wanted um tell me a bit about your home space and how you kind of uh, the intention behind it and and yeah kind of what you want to create there and how you've built in a lot of this um health and wellness like daily things into your life and into your home yeah we were really lucky to stumble across this space um uh, out in the country beautiful we're surrounded by nature we're actually on the property there are hundreds of palm trees so it's like this palm tree forest and um it was a magical discovery because <laughs> my husband and I whenever we'd travel we would just love seeing all the palm trees and had this kind of weird affinity to palm trees. <laughs> um, maybe because they represent a holiday or, or something, you know, being at a resort. And Tropical really, vibes. Yeah. And just kind of slipping into that. We'd, we'd always go away on holiday and be, you know, sometimes doing work away if we had to on our businesses and stuff. And then we'd be like, why can't we work like this every day? Like the, this is the life. Um, laptop by the pool with the um, palm trees. And, you know, um, anyway, so we found this this place and it all just happened so fast and with so much alignment. And um, just I walked, there's a platform that goes into the forest. And I remember walking up the platform and I couldn't believe it. It, it was so beautiful. It had a sp- special type of feel there's a tree in there that's hundreds of years old and I just I absolutely burst into tears because I couldn't handle it it was so beautiful and and I knew this was the space and so we decided to just take a breather from city life and and get out of the city for a while and set the intention to you know we're fortunate enough to be able to run our businesses remotely. So we both have a home office here. Matt also has his own businesses. And so we wanted to create a space that was our, our, our vision and our mission and everything we do is about health. So it only made sense to then set about slowly or or quickly turning our space into a total space of wellness Mm -hmm. and um, really transforming the space into like an extension of us and our businesses. And it was really funny. We've recently renovated a lot of the space and it ended up becoming exactly like 111. (laughs) I just (laughs) found that so funny. because you know it's a 111 is an extension of essentially us so um so really what was important to us is the nature element is is huge um we wanted to i don't know this wasn't really 
our initial intention. We just wanted to have the space for us. But the more we keep doing this, more I'm like, is this going to turn into a retreat one day? Like what's happening? Um, because we added hammocks outside and fire pits and we have the platform in the forest. Um, Matt built a basketball court. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that wasn't my thing. Um, we we um, built this beautiful outdoor area um, with timber paneling and travertine tiles and an outdoor shower where we put the lovely sauna um, mm -hmm. that you guys have so beautifully crafted with that stunning wood. Um, and, and that was really, oh, that is my favourite part of the house. I mean, just at the end of the day to be able to, to, to relax and wine, get in the sauna, detoxify. Oh, so relaxing. Get some light therapy, then get out and then have a cold shower straight out of this. So, so beautiful. Mm. And then uh, we're finding um, Matt and I doing that. And then before meditation, you're already in this very relaxed state. Um, and then you have a nice meditation and then ready for, for dinner and, and to carry on with the evening. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really, we have so many other plans for this place. I, I, um, it'd be funny maybe to listen back to this in a year or so and see if we did it, but I'm planning to build a yoga shala in the forest, um, with all the trees so that I can, I don't know. I just don't know why we'll see what happens. I feel like we need to bring people into the space. It just, it needs to be used. Um, but, but yeah, we wanted to really live in and embody our health and, you know, getting a proper water filter for the water to get, I don't know if most people know this or not, You, I'm sure you do, Alex, but getting all the um, the chlorine and all of the stuff out of our, our tap water is really important because that's going onto the skin and, you know, all these things. It's it's been mind blowing the positive effect of just having a space where you feel so grounded and, um, and so well and the impact, the trickle on effect it has in business. So even if it, there's a lot going on and there's all these challenges and a bit of stress, you can kind of really step out of that and it doesn't hang around like it's not this residual um, ongoing stress. And I, I really believe that, you know, before this we were in, in a very – you know, a small space in the city and we still found our ways to make it um, a, a space of wellness though. Um, I don't want anyone listening to this thing. Oh, well, that's great that you have this place in, in the forest. Um, how am I going to do that at home? But I've done this in, in tiny apartments when I was traveling, just doing small things to make it feel like a, a nice space to be in, feel safe, make it your own, um, have your, your things you like. A nice incense could be <laughs> all that you need. Um, but, yeah, definitely the, the sauna has been such an incredible part of that and just kind of, um, yeah, completing the picture with this and then rehydrating after. So, um, again, I've, I give really long answers to questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> They're not long answers. They're beautiful answers. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, we haven't really touched on it, but um, I get this feeling from yourself that um, you have the mindset that you can create anything that you want to in your life because that's what you're doing. You know, you were in the city. Now you're in this beautiful place. You're creating this space of wellness at home. And, I have a similar belief and I think we all could, you know, yeah, there's always challenges in life. Absolutely. Um, but we can create these places of wellness. And it sounds to me like since you've been doing that, you have actually elevated not just your health, but your business and other areas of your life, your relationships, those kind of things have been elevated since you've been in this space. It sounds like. Yeah. It's, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole crazy story, but around the same time, I, I, had um, ended a, a one business partnership and we moved and all this stuff happened at the same time. And it was a, a bit of a spiritual activation actually. And, and yet it was this whole thing. And um, in a meditation one day I saw a blue butterfly and it was just weird and really cryptic. And then when we drove up to this space, I opened up the car door and um, it was just random. Matt was like, get in the car. We're checking out house. I'm like, what? Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I opened the door and I saw 
a blue butterfly and I just completely lost it. I just didn't know what to think. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. And then that was just a sign that, you know, this is where I'm meant to be. So it's sort of like when it comes to this whole topic of manifestation, which again is a whole nother juicy topic for mm-hmm. another day, but um, my learning and understanding of what that means has evolved where it's, it's become, I know that we all like to say, this is what I want and this is my vision board and so on. But for me, it's um, become about seeing what's already there and, and noticing and witnessing what's meant for you because what's meant for you is the best thing that's designed for you. But if you're missing it and you're not paying attention um, or you, you're not attuned to the cues, then you're going to sidestep it. But it's always going to be, it's always going to be an evolution. There's always going to be a better thing for you. So um, that anyway, tangent, um, but oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's definitely something we, um, we visualized and really felt so excited to create um, because it's the right thing. It'll feel what's meant for you will feel so right. And so there's a, um, a quote that, came up for me a lot um, when I've been exploring a lot of the Vedic knowledge, um, which is just amazing, um, through some courses um, I've been doing, my meditation teacher, Jess. Um, around that time, a quote kept coming up for me really strongly, which is um, by Guru Dev. Um, he's, he's a um, very revered um, guru in the Vedic tradition, and it's about you deserve the best. And it's about claim it's what the quote goes on to say is it's really about claiming the best and knowing what the best is because the best is different for any, everyone has a different version of what that is. Um, and so if we know what that best is, that's what is meant for us really. Um, it's just accepting that and claiming it because no one else is going to our individual best is what we want. So if you go, Oh, wow. What, lights my heart up and makes me feel so alive and excited. And I really want that. If we shrink back down and go, well, I don't deserve that. Well, we're not, that's not living in line with nature. You know, we need to go, yes, I'll I'll take that. Thank you. Um, That's nature's cue. So what I've come to know from this kind of really um, strange experience with, you know, the palm trees and then seeing the butterfly and then showing up here is that, well, you just go with it and, and you don't really have to go, give me that goddamn Ferrari, let it drive my chauffeur. Um, you know, all the manifestation people always give the Ferrari example. I don't know. It's just funny. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just become like align with what the best is. Like don't, don't deny it. Don't deny yourself of it. You do deserve it. Like the only person saying you don't deserve it is you. So yeah. Um, yeah, if it takes a bit of planning and a bit of grit, yeah, sure. But you're going to know what the right thing is to manifest from my own personal experience. I don't want to put um, words in anyone's mouth, but for me, it's just going, I will finally allow that to happen. And then, you know, it's not going to feel like a struggle. So it's, yeah, it's a beautiful experience. It's um, it's sitting with yourself and, and saying, I am worthy, right? Feeling worthy allowing these beautiful things to come in and what really stood out there was just being tapped into that spiritual side of our life you know seeing the synchronicities you know maybe it's the numbers maybe it's the blue butterfly whatever that may be for you but being tuned into that like that's the the specialness of this world that we're currently in you know that all these things show up and if we're open to that um life is just this beautiful playground of interesting and exciting moments, you know, um, challenging moments, but, you know, also giftful moments and all those things. So yeah, I really, really love that. Um, this has been a really beautiful conversation. Um, thank you so much. Um, it's been a real pleasure for me. I hope it has for you as well. Um, if people want to find out more about you or follow you, um, or learn more about 111 where can they do that 
Yeah, it's been such a pleasure, though. I've I've loved chatting with you. Could have gone on for a lot longer. Um, so if if you want to connect um with us at One Eleven Health, it's One Eleven Health on Instagram, One Eleven Health dot com. So many different videos, masterclass videos from Dylan, free resources, heaps of stuff there. If you want to connect with me, I'm I'm Cassie Cameron on Instagram. Um, and yeah, and, and reach out and yeah, connect with us. Cause we're always sharing a lot of different information and resources just cause that's what we do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Love it. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, hopefully we'll have you back on here again soon. Beautiful.